thanks for tuning in to Pregnancy Pros with me, Dr. Plenty. Today, we're going to talk about what to expect during your fetal anatomy scan. But before we get started, please click the subscribe button below. Subscribe, follow me for all the quick updates you can get, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. All right, so this is gonna be a really quick talk about an anatomy scan. And so a lot of people get nervous around that 18 to 20 week mark when it's time to go and get their ultrasound. So an ultrasound can be done either by your OBGYN in their office, by a radiologist that may look at the baby from head to toe, or by a maternal fetal medicine specialist like me. If you are high risk, meaning you're over age 35, you have a history of diabetes or high blood pressure, or you have an autoimmune disorder like lupus, you've had a history of a heart attack or stroke or cancer, if you're on um, certain medicines um, that can be dangerous in pregnancy, or if you're on multiple different medicines um, with unknown data in pregnancy, you should be getting your ultrasound by someone like me, a maternal fetal medicine specialist, who specializes in diagnosing fetal anomalies because you are at higher risk for having a baby with a malformation, meaning a defect, like a heart defect or a brain defect. Doesn't mean that we're going to find those things, but it's better to know what's going on before it happens than to be surprised after delivery. Um, I won't ever forget watching Jimmy Fallon Live, um, the time when he found out his child at five days old had a heart defect. They had to rush the baby back to the hospital because their child ended up having Tetralogy of Fallot. That is something that we can diagnose at 18 to 20 weeks, even before that sometimes. So that is not something that you should get surprised by at the time of delivery. So as a maternal fetal medicine specialist, my job is to look at your baby from head to toe, make sure that we don't have any surprises at delivery and rule out the things that we can rule out during the pregnancy so that the baby gets the best care possible after delivery. Some people will get early ultrasounds to look at the baby's anatomy. If you've had a history of something wrong with the baby's bladder, like what's called a bladder outlet obstruction in a previous pregnancy, you may need your anatomy looked at even a little earlier than that. But typically speaking, 18 to 20 weeks is a normal time for you to get an anatomy scan. During that scan, you will have a sonographer that will lay you on a table. Right now, during COVID, um, a lot of people can't have visitors. My clinic does allow one visitor during um, ultrasound exams. Both visitors have to wear, well, what that visitor has to wear a mask as well as the patient has to wear a mask. The first thing we do is we try to look at the cervix. So we like to see the cervix, make sure that it's not coming open. It doesn't look short. It doesn't look like there's membranes or the, the water bag basically um, diving into the cervix. We call that funneling. We look at that abdominally. And if we see something that is suspicious at the level of the cervix, then you may be asked to do a transvaginal ultrasound during that exam so that we know that the cervix is nice and long. If it's not, that could be a sign that you're at increased risk for a preterm delivery, which is another of, of these videos, okay? Um, but assuming it's normal, the next thing we would do is look at the baby's head. And what we're looking for are signs of hydrocephalus or anything that's missing in the brain. We look for landmarks in the brain. We look at what's called the cavum septum pellucida, which is a little boxy area at the front part of the brain. It's really a landmark for what's called the corpus callosum, um, which tells us that both hemispheres are communicating um, effectively. We also look at the hind brain called the cerebellum and the lateral ventricles um, to make sure there's not too much fluid on the brain. We also look at other structures in the brain um, to make sure that things look symmetrical, make sure that the midline is there, um, and we make sure there's not any cyst in the brain, which can be soft markers for chromosomal abnormalities. We look at the head circumference, meaning the area, the radius around the head, and then we look at the what's called the biparietal diameter, which is the diameter across um, from one side of the head to the next. Um, that with the abdominal circumference, as well as the length of the femur or the thigh bone um, or what we use to calculate the weight of the baby. We then take a look at the face. We wanna make sure both orbits are there, the lenses are intact, 
that the baby has a normal nasal bone, that the baby has a normal lip, upper lip, lower lip, chin and palate because we don't want to make we want to make sure we don't have a cleft lip or palate specifically that would be the most common facial issue a baby would have then we take a brief look at the neck just to make sure that everything looks good there and then we go down to the chest in the chest we should see three major vessels the pulmonary artery the aorta and the superior vena cava those three vessels, along with the four-chamber view of the heart, will rule out about 80% of cardiac defects alone. But then we also look at what's called outflow tracts. We want to look at the left side of the heart, and as it enters, uh, as the left side goes into the aorta, and the right side of the heart, as the right side goes into the pulmonary arteries and then branch. Um, seeing those with the superior vena cava is very reassuring. Um, we can also look at little holes between the ventricles, um, and that's called ventricular septal defect. During pregnancy, there's always um, a connection in the atria because of normal shunts there during pregnancy. But if the atria or the top portion of the heart looks enlarged, um, that could mean that there is what's called an atrial septal defect, which needs to be repaired after delivery. That would be less common than a defect at the level of the ventricles. We then, if you are a high-risk patient, we would also look at the arches. So we look at a blood flow through the aorta to the rest of the body. We look at blood flow from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, the big vessels that, that drain blood to, back to the right atrium of the heart. We look at those going into the right atrium. We look at what's called the ductal arch, which is a shunt in pregnancy to make sure it's coming from the right side of the heart out. We look at the shape of the heart. We look at the orientation of the heart and how it lies in the chest. And we also look at the heart in relation to the size and the location of the lungs to make sure that it's not rotated or shifted over. We look at the lung fields to make sure there's no cyst or masses there. And then we look at the diaphragm to make sure that the diaphragm is intact and the stomach is below the level of the diaphragm. We then go down to the abdomen and that's where we measure the level of the what's called abdominal uh, circumference. We look for the stomach bubble and the hepatic vessel which we can see curving away from the stomach. Rarely it curves the opposite way which would be a persistent right umbilical vein. We then we go down below the level of the abdomen and we look for the kidneys. We look specifically at the pelvis to make sure that the pelvis or where fluid collects before it drains into the bladder through the ureters um, are normal in size. We can also see the adrenal glands at this level, although they can be difficult to see at 18 to 20 weeks. We then look at the bowel to make sure it's not too bright. We look at the stomach to make sure it's normal. And we look at the umbilical cord as it inserts into the baby's belly button to make sure that it has a normal insertion site and that all the bowel is actually on the inside instead of the outside of the belly. We then look at all the bones in the baby. We look at the hands, we look at the feet and how they're oriented to make sure there's no club feet. Um, we also make sure that we see uh, the number of toes, the number of fingers. Um, we make sure that the shape and the, the intensity of brightness of the bone is also normal. And then we also take measurements of those bones to make sure they're not too short. Um, like I say, those measurements, the thigh bone is included in the weight measurement. The other measurements are just to calculate and make sure that those bones are not too short and they're on target. We then look at all the fluid around the baby. We look at the placenta or the afterbirth to make sure it's not too close to the opening of the uterus, which is called the cervix. Um, and we also make sure there's nothing like a mass in the placenta or um, a mass in the uterus. We also look at the ovaries to make sure they're normal. And then once we look at the size of the baby and make sure that we have all the boxes checked off, that is what's considered your normal anatomy scan. If we see anything abnormal, that will prompt us to either, you would either get sent to a high-risk specialist like us, or we would do a lot more detailed measurements and evaluation of the baby, depending on what we find. You can expect your anatomy scan to last anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. A basic anatomy scan probably is going to last you somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, whereas a detailed anatomy scan for people that are high risk, meaning we have to take a lot more detailed look um, at different parts of the baby because of um, comorbidities of the mom or a history of congenital malformations in the family, that scan can take 30 to 45 minutes. 
And sometimes because of how the baby's laying, we may not get every single thing that we need to see in that first scan. So do not be in shock if we have to say, hey, we need to bring you back in, you know, two to four weeks so that we can complete the anatomy. Like maybe we didn't see the baby's face well enough because the baby was looking down. Maybe we didn't see views of the heart because the baby was rotated in an in an oblique position. These are not abnormal and it's nothing for you to be alarmed about. So look forward to your anatomy scan. Um, believe that most things are normal, okay? It's only a small percentage of people that have abnormalities. And the good thing is, even if you have an abnormality, at least you know about it ahead of time so that you can prepare. I hope this answers questions about what to expect during the anatomy scan. If you have any specific questions, email me at pregnancypearls at gmail.com. Also, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Um, I did do a terrific episode this past week about the COVID-19 vaccine, yay or nay. So please make sure to check that out. Um, And I also have another upcoming episode that drops every single Thursday. Um, Also, if you're not following me already, shame on you. Follow us on the Facebook page at Pregnancy Pearls and on Instagram at Pregnancy underscore Pearls. Until next time, bye friends.